G'day, Brian back again. I just posted it, put on another trade just a minute ago as I'm busy putting the trades on, videoing them. It's a lot of work, but just to show you the basic principles, once again, we iterate that the down was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the Renko. Uh, we would hope to get 6 on the upswing, and we've uh, just re uh, just recapping on the last video. We took that small one up just to show you the trade because we're waiting and it's hard doing this in, in videos in real time, but it gives you an idea. The reason we put that trade on was at 335. Uh, it, it's, um, it looks like it's going to change the volume again and go down. And we've got a, a trade on, but we got to wait and see what really does happen as the trend is currently up on that uh, line it's it's gone into one up and it fulfilled our, our last requirements there of the downtrend it's a higher down and looking at here we got a higher high and a higher low as you can see there we have a higher high higher low which is also an indication that the trend is is going up we are looking at the uh, the charts here and the Australian dollar is still uh, higher than the US dollar the US dollar as you can see that's going the right way well and this is continuing up so we are looking at an up and you're looking at uh, achieving three four five maybe six on the up will it break the previous high that's the next thing you've got to look at the lowers uh, you're getting higher lows and higher highs which are all favoring a long trend. Your buy volume is 13, which is not a great buy volume. You see it's switching and changing. The volatility is extremely high. As I mentioned before, this is not a market for trading in big lots, trading your smallest lot size, taking small scalps, accessing your risk as your bottom line level, as an example for a stop loss, or just below the, um, the resistance here as a stop loss. You're looking at trading small pips. You're looking at trading a higher interest currency on a buy. And you can do sells if the market di dictates for you to do a sell. And it's your choice. There's no right or wrong way to trade the Forex. I just trade it this way for scalps. It's not 100% certain in high volatility markets. You can see the volatility is switching between buys and sells rather rapidly. You're going from loss, profit, loss and we're looking at if we can turn this around and keep continuing on with the, the higher highs and the lower lows and looking at these numbers and looking at the count here too. We should if this works out alright we should continue up with the blues but red coats so we had the one two three four five six as there is a market intervention by the governments banks etc nothing is sure trading the market in these economic times i repeat that nothing is certain in trading this year these economic times i hope to get back to you on this trade we'll wait it out and just see if the volume changes. If the volume it suddenly goes up rather dramatically, we're seeing government intervention. At the moment, it's just a mixed market, buyers and sellers. We are trading above the close price now. It's when it breaks below the close price, then the market will suddenly change into a, a definite sell. At the moment, we're trading within a very, very tight close range. Can you see the points we're making? It's above the close. So the, the trend for the day is buys, which is a higher probability on buys. The current sell range is down, but the price is still above the close. So we have no breakout of the trading range of this in the buys until it goes below there on the sells. When it does, then that trading range becomes a sell and we quickly we would put on a sell. 
If you're trading like I am here, you have a double option because if this goes down below that, you can immediately put a sell on and lock your positions in as far as profit loss on non-US brokers. On US brokers, you can look at um, look at, and we'll do that quickly while we're waiting. We're we're gonna look at. Um, where is the U.S. Canadian on here? Uh -huh, we haven't. But you can look at the U.S. Canadian, whether that is moving the opposite counter when you're doing a non-U.S. broker trade. So you can do it both ways, and sometimes you can lock in your price on a fixed level. Okay, we went away. It's still in minus loss, and... And we're back on the on the chart. Looking at the chart, look at the uh, drawdown. It's very, I think you'd be very acceptable drawdown in this sort of market. Minus eleven point eight one dollars on a five thousand account is hardly risking a lot of money. And we're trading just trading in a tight market, trading. Very, a very dangerous market to be in if you're putting a lot of money in. Of course, point 0.1 lots would also be acceptable in this market. And uh, you can certainly lock in your profits, lock, lock in your loss, so that on here it was pointing at an up market. If the sudden volume it changes rather dramatically, if the volume is going up at the moment, it's 8.38 p.m. in, uh, in Adelaide, and it's quarter to one in Poland. So we're just sitting here waiting and we, we don't, as you can see, we're locked in a tight range. It's not going to go, if it breaks through here, we're going to be on a short. You can immediately on a non-US broker put a short in and lock in two positions either way. It's nice trading, easy, safe trading, trading this way on non-US brokers. The brokers in the United States have a, dear, a difficult time. See the the uh, Shires come in and said, okay, if we break onto that line, we're definitely still going up in an up position. Uh -huh. We've got that, although we're going down overall. In the four hour position, we're going down in this minute, we're going up. We're heading, looking like going up. We've still got two blue, so we've got no reason to change. It hasn't dropped down below the red, so we're not going to put a, a sell on to counter the long hedge. You can see immediately the advantages I'm talking about, that you're locking in your buy at the temporary and you're countering with a sell and then waiting until the last moment till you get a, a from the sell goes down its furthest furthest method, you've virtually locked it in, you then can plop in, uh, trade your, watch your, take your profit and then watch your buy start to move up when it goes into the blue again. So it's a continuous cycle of buy, sell, buy, sell on non-US brokers. On US brokers, I look at counter trends, uh, currencies that match your current trade thing. And when they go counter to what you are, you have a locked-in price. Okay, uh, I can't wait. This is just a quick example, and we're waiting for this to go into a plus. Or if it goes, it breaks the close of the day, we're going to put in a sell, and we have a sell and a buy on, and we watch the sell go right down, and the buy stays on. Okay. Bye for now from Brian. God bless.